My name is Daryl Foster, and this is Real Opinions. My name is Daryl Foster. I'm a writer, director, and an actor, and I'm based in London. How did you end up doing what you're doing now? So as a, as a writer, director, and actor where I am now, I think it, my journey into that sort of... Um, industry and territory has been quite 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 long and probably not the normal route so I I kind of went to university in Wolverhampton did a media degree I came out with high hopes and ambitions to get into the media industry in that very vague sense uh and couldn't couldn't get into the the industry couldn't penetrate the market sort of thing and then I did a bit of traveling I I I found myself in education um where I was I was a mentor for seven years um, which has actually become the basis of my first uh, directorial short film. Um, and then, yeah, I did a lot of sort of random jobs, essentially. And then I finally got a break and as an intern uh, at, uh, at on a Channel 4 traineeship scheme, and that sort of opened me up. I learned about this thing called development, which was new to me, and it was a penny drop moment. And, yeah, I spent some time at Fremantle, uh, and as well as Red Production Company working in development teams, both factual and scripted. And I've sort of like taken all of those skill sets and uh, sort of experiences and I put them to use and I wrote my first script and I turned that script into a short film. And that's that's why I'm here today. Nice, nice. And how long have you been active in the industry? I've been active in the industry for um as a as a writer director i've been active for a year as an actor i've been active for five to seven years and just working in the sort of tv industry i'd say um i've been active for about nine years nice and i'm going to be really cruel and ask you which role do you prefer that is a tough one for i can narrow it down to three roles which is acting writing directing um and I really do believe it's like a 50-50 split. I, 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 I love acting. I, I, I kind of like, and the way I see acting is it's, it's kind of like my Everest. Um, it's almost unattainable to try and get to the, 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 the to, ha- to have the right performance. It's unattainable. But I feel with directing and writing, um, it's, it's a bit more tangible to sort of get a hold of those reins, if that makes sense. So I think they 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 really do suit the both the sides of me. Um, and although I I brought them all together in my film Hard to Reach as a writer director and actor, I want to keep those worlds separate going forward. I'm very excited to to do that. That was my next question. Actually, was uh, how was it directing yourself? Obviously, because you're kind of at the helm with being the writer director and and one of the leads. But how how was that? Was that something that you were like? As a first time geek, is that something that you were like, I have no baseline to kind of go for against? Yes, I think that's the that's probably the best way to look at it. There was no baseline. And it, the way it sort of came together was I originally wrote this script um, for me as an actor. I had this like, deep down desire to direct, but whether it was lack of confidence or just it being too much of a big ask. Um, but the way things transpired and the development of the script and when my producer Jessica came on board as well, um, yeah, I, it just felt like this was the thing to do. It felt like it was meant to happen this way and I was going to fail big. And I remember one of my old bosses always said to me, fail big. If you're going to fail, you might as well fail big. So, um, and someone else, uh, Fiona Lamptey, um, she did a talk at LFF a couple of years ago and she was saying when you're making your short films it's the most creative you're ever going to be before sort of studios get involved and bigger finances and other people telling you what you can and can't do so you might as well go and so I don't think she she was telling me to (laughs) direct and and act but I took it as uh okay I'm just going to go full kitchen sink on this one and just see what happens um but the actual experience itself was, it was probably, sometimes I think about it, I think maybe that's the most creative experience I'm ever really going to get in a sense, because 
it, it never stopped. As an actor, sometimes the difficult part is the, the stopping where you feel you're in a flow and then you stop for whatever reason. You know, your your next scene's not until six hours later. Um, but this was the first time, a bit very similar to theatre, um, where it was constant. And it's the same thing for directing as well. I, I, I was just always on. And I felt that there was something quite special about that where I was just in it. Um, but I have to give a huge sort of kind of shout out to the team I had around me. Um, without them, you know, it wouldn't have been possible. So it was very challenging. It wasn't easy. Um, but I think the key point is for anybody that wants to do the same is really having that distinction from when you're playing the role and literally stepping out of that um, physically or um, metaphorically, however you want to look at it. When you become the director and going back, you have to be very conscious of that. You can't just, it's, it's not, flu you shouldn't be fluid. You have, I think you have to have a bit of a mental switch. So I'm going to do, ask some general questions now, and I feel like you might have just answered one of them, but you might have some other nuggets. Um, so what's the best piece of advice you've been given? It's something I read, actually, um, and I, I believe it is everything matters. The, the details, they do matter. And I think that's something I naturally did. Um, and when I read this, um, it was, I'm really into cars. It's one of my, aside from films, I'm really into cars. And there's this car company called Singer Porsche. And I think it's across, written across their sort of like, it's their statement piece of their brand. And it's everything matters. And I think it's just because the details, whatever those details are, the creative details, the words on the page, uh, your, the crew, the locate, the details really do matter. And I think that's, I think if you care about the details, um, when it comes to being on set and, and and making it happen, you've kind of crossed many bridges already. So yeah, it's the best advice. Nice. And on the flip side, what's the worst advice that you've been told? The worst advice is a direct um, opposite of that. So one of my previous bosses who has such wisdom and nuggets of information, and he really, I owe a lot to him, but he said one thing to me, which I, it's probably the only thing I ever disagreed with, he said, um, I was building a, a deck for um so he's build treatment decks for pictures and i was taking quite a, a long time to do this i was being quite you know fastidious about doing it and he said to me he says oh you you're worrying about the small things you don't need to and i just felt i remember he said it um and, and i think his idea was like we can just get it out faster and we can do more um and that really to my core didn't sit right with me because it's just not how i am um, so I think that was the worst advice I've ever received was like telling me that the small things uh, don't matter, where I think it is, it's about the details. And I think that's how I approach, I try to approach most things in life, especially creative things when it's the, the details do matter. And there's some synergy between your good advice and bad advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. You know, yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's a big, it's a big defining thing for me, at least anyway, definitely. Mm hmm. So now I'm going to ask you, is there a place or location that you've always wanted to make a film? No, no, there's not. No, it's, I'm, I'm trying to, there, there, there isn't a, a specific location. That I, no, no. No worries, no worries. Um, now I want you to tell us about one of your favourite festival experiences. Okay, so um, my favourite festival experience would have to be... Um, PAF, so the Pan-African Film Festival in LA, specifically in Crenshaw. Um, this was, it took place in February of 2023, so very recent. And yeah, it was it was kind of a magical experience. Um, it didn't differ so much from other festivals I've been to, but I just think being in, in LA um, and just the sort of the, the energy and the, the drive and the sort of... Um, passion of American filmmakers it's it felt different and it felt things were moving a lot faster um you know um when we were sort of like presenting our films we had big posters I had a t-shirt printed with my you that they go in and I quickly assimilated um which was amazing and I threw myself into it and it was a beautiful experience and on top of that as well I think and a few of the other filmmakers who um, we were out there, who were from, say, London or the UK, that have been out there, 
It was just being at, so could it, is the Pan-African Film Festival. It was, you know, of, of, of the African diaspora. And being in those those spaces, but such a sort of um, a, a bigger space of so, so, uh, like just all well, primarily black and of the African diaspora filmmakers, it was quite... Yeah, it was, it was, for me, someone who lives in the UK, it was a rare thing and it was a beautiful thing. And it was kind of crept up on you after a few days where you're like, something feels a bit different here. And yeah, and it was so welcoming and it was, yeah, it truly was a, a fantastic experience. So I recommend any, anybody and everyone to, to, to go to Pan African Film Festival. It was great. It is a great festival. It really is. Like I think every client that we've had that's gone there has just said exactly the same thing, like fully embracing like really just warm and just everyone is is so excited to see what you've worked on like just to kind of see the stories you want to share which is great it is really great it was a highlight moment where I think it opened with a well I, it did open with a sort of director's brunch at the director's guild of America and and just to be in that space you know I mean I arrived in West Hollywood and I just saw the building I was like how am I here this is this is crazy and then you're pitching your idea to um uh, uh, um, forgot his name now. <laughs> and, uh, brain freeze there. Oh my god! You're pitching your idea to Danny Glover, and you yeah. know he gave me the wink and the gun, which is something I'll uh, hold on to. Yeah. <laughs> How would you describe yourself to a stranger who you met on a park bench? How would I describe myself to a stranger on a park bench? I would say that I am uh, loyal. Um, I'd say, uh, I'd say kind and probably funny. I think I think I'm funny. <laughs> I can see the cogs turning. You're like, how, how, how can I describe this? Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a bit of a curveball question because obviously people don't necessarily describe themselves. Yeah, know? and and uh, and also you don't want to be that kind of bullshit. Like, yeah, I'm this, this, <laughs> this, this. Um, but then also you don't want to undersell yourself. You know? No, you don't. No, you yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think it's very apt. Um, so next, I'm going to ask you, um, what do you want people to feel like when they've watched your work? So this is a really interesting question. Um, I think ultimately, I think where I, I sit generally, I think this is, you know, looking back on my life and experience with friends and relationships and just spaces and work is I, I think I, I, I kind of try to sit, just my thought process on, on a lot of things is in the gray area. So, you know, you have very black and white viewpoints and you've got the gray in between and I just try to I try to stay in there which sometimes isn't the best thing it can be you know we might need to sort of move over to one or the other but like that's sometimes how I sort of navigate life um and I kind of want to do that I want audiences to have to 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 be in that gray space watching my films whatever that subject matters on so whether it's about relationships whether it's about masculinity or identity or race I don't want to um have a sort of um a line in the sand of where they need to sit. I want them to sort of be in that gray space and that can be uncomfortable. It can be cosseting, it can be tender, but I want them to sort of watch my films and come away with a sort of like a feeling of like that it could go either way or, you know, and, and they can imbue with their own sort of um, thought processes and ideals. Yeah. What's the one thing that makes you disappointed about the film industry? Yeah, sometimes it feels like there's a sort of a, a, a push or desire, especially from funding bodies, where you feel like your film has to, to some degree, fall into sort of trauma, you know, wherever that trauma is and whatever it means to people. Um, and it feels like I, it comes from a place of authenticity and it feels from it comes from a place of trying to reset the balance, which I believe in and, and, and strongly. But sometimes as a filmmaker, what I'm feeling now on either side is, um, you know, um, it might sort of put up these guidelines where you are creatively and you might not necessarily want to go down that sort of path. But sometimes it feels that like, yeah, to get to get funding or to, to, to get ahead, you might, 
it, it might be encouraged too. So I think that's something I've seen and been sort of internally questioning. But I think just speaking to other filmmakers, um, it's reset my sort of um, where where I'm at and the stories I want to tell. And just I think it's just I think there's always going to be these pulls from the industry, and you just need really need to stay true to the stories you want to tell because it's hard work to make a film, and that film is going to stay with you for life. And so that's what I've yeah. It's kind of like it's been a challenge, but also it's just refocused where I where I need to be. So I just want to continue to tell tell stories that ultimately I want to tell and that I think represent who I am as a as a person. Brilliant answer. On a side note, um, so I am an avid TikTok watcher and there is a brilliant user uh, that I've been following for a while now called, uh, I think he's called Domo Draper. And he's this, I don't actually know what he does as a job, but he's a black guy that basically watches content like old films and TV shows, but he's seeing it through a 21st century outlook. So it's kind of basically he watched... Um, what do you watch the other day? Uh, oh, he watched, uh, have you ever seen Kids by Larry Clark? Yes, yes. Yeah, fucking dark, like yes. absolutely horrendous. Yes. And somebody had said to him, oh, you should watch Larry Clark's Kids because it will just make you depressed for like life. And basically you see him kind of watch snippets of the film and then comment on it. And what I found quite interesting is a lot of the films that he's kind of going through, and he's going back to like, you know, old Disney films, um, he's going back to like 80s classics that my my taste as an adult I used to love these kind of really bleak films and now as an adult I can't watch them I'm like I can't be in that position of just gloom and trauma porn for too long because it's just like we have enough of that in the real world so why would I want to embrace it and it's just made me very acutely aware that you're right I I personally I off the record um funding bodies want that doom and gloom because they kind of feel like that the the bombastic you know like the kind of horrendous stories is going to is going to make it stand out but you're like but you're asking a creative to put their name to that and it has to be something that they want to do and and if they want to do it great but also at the same time like it shouldn't be for exploitation sake yeah yeah like and I just like literally watching I definitely if you don't if, if you do have TikTok I definitely do recommend following this guy because the films he watches you're like wait is that is that a bad one and then you watch it and like literally his comments you just go fuck I completely forgot that's horrendous what, like, what's his name again sorry he's called Domo Draper Domo Draper and he's really funny he basically plays two two characters of, by himself of watching films together um and it's just like, you know, there's comment on, uh, you know, representation. Uh, you know, he, what was he doing? He was doing um, Breakfast at Tiffany's with Yellow Face and the Mickey Rock character. But then also kind of looking at um, Disney films and kind of representations of, you know, black slavery. And it's kind of that stuff that like media literacy that we kind of pick up as we grow up, that you just kind of, can be swept under the carpet very easily, but also some films do not date very well. No. <laughs> what has someone done for you that made you feel wanted? So um, it's not film related, but I had a birthday party uh, weekend before last. And it's always a bit nerve wracking when you throw like a birthday party, but like, yeah, all my friends, new old filmmaker friends that I've met across the film festival season, uh, they all came through and sung happy birthday. And that was, that was amazing. And that was, that was a really nice experience. And it's good to sort of have, yeah, I just felt very privileged to have amazing people around me, like, you know, really nice, kind, creative, interesting, just generally good people. So that was, that was something that was really nice and I felt wanted. Yeah. Oh, that is a nice answer. Um, right. So now I'm going to do some quick fire questions, but you are more than welcome to expand on the answers if you have anything. Um, so um, do you watch your own work when it's being screened? Yes, but it's very difficult. Um, and I always do it because so far I've been in a situation where it would cause more 
um, <laughs> drama if I was to get up and walk out. So I always find myself sitting near the front or in the middle, and it's just never at the back because it's just the way it works out when the people I know are near the front. Um, so I find I do, but sometimes I look on the ground and don't watch it. Um, or sometimes, you know, I'll slow up to certain parts I know I don't want, need to see, want to see. This is for reference because I'm acting in the film as well. Um, uh, but interestingly, um, when I was at the last film festival, when my film screen, which was um, uh, PATH, the Pan African Film Festival, I don't know why, why, but that was the first time since we first sort of picture locked where I felt comfortable watching it and I just enjoyed it. Um, just thinking, oh, you know, retrospectively, oh, you know, that was a great time. I really enjoyed that. Look at what we've achieved. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. I've been thinking about it, but I'm not sure why. But yeah, just for whatever reason, it felt like it was, it was comfortable to watch. But normally it's, it's excruciating. Yeah. Is that because you are acting in it, do you think you'd still have the same response if you were not acting in it and you were just purely writer-director? I believe, I, I, I truly believe it's because I'm acting in it. Um, if I had solely directed and wrote, wrote it, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it would cause me any sort of <laughs> awkwardness at all. What makes you want to see a film? I remember when I saw the trailer for Triangle Sadness and that's probably the most recent sort of trailer or I heard it was coming out and I already knew of Ruben's work and was a huge fan of his short films and Force Majeure, uh, The Square. And so when I heard about Triangle Sadness, I was so excited. Um, and I think it's because, you know, boldness, um, fearlessness and potential controversy. And that made me go to the cinema. I think I was just, I was just, I didn't know what to expect. And I thought, it, anything could happen and that was very exciting and I wasn't disappointed either <laughs> I watched that on a plane oh. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it on a plane flying to Sundance and I was just surrounded by industry people and you could tell who'd seen it because they were like you know what I do all the time when I'm on a plane I'll watch what other people are watching yeah, and yeah. I feel like I've seen the film because I've seen it enough times over someone's shoulder and you could just see people like going <laughs> <laughs> if you were not working in film what would you be doing instead? If I weren't working in film, I believe I'd be working in the sort of automotive car industry, uh, probably as a, a journalist or sort of like a journalist slash presenter or just working in that, like with my hands. Um, you know, I, I, I do enjoy doing things with my hands, whether it's mechanical stuff or trying to build stuff. I've not done it for a while because life gets in the way. But um, yeah, I think the car industry or something to do with design. I think that's what I'd, I'd be doing. Nice. And do you collect anything? I used to collect comic books and I've still got them, um, but I can't say I collect them now because it's it's a dormant passion. Um, yeah, I've just got loads of trinkets um, that I've kept. I found recently um, that, that I'm going to put on my shelf. I've got this orange. It's an actual real orange fruit that I've, I've, I've had for a long time let's let's say and it's solid now um and it's fully formed and it's absolutely solid and the reason i kept it was because it was my first ever acting role in this amateur dramatics uh play and i played a character called ketu in a play called the hundred and my line was the earth is round like an orange and i had to hold an orange and i've still got that orange over a decade later and it's solid and well formed so that's what i collect things from my own life past. <laughs> yeah. A random, a random trinket, but a <laughs> um, and it's a real orange. That's amazing. It's, it's a real. It's, I bought the orange from Tesco or Sainsbury's, uh, and I've literally kept it. Um, and it's, I mean, I could show you. It's fully formed. It's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I presume in my head, I was just like, well, obviously things kind of degrade, but then the skin of an orange is quite tough. You, I can show you. Take me two seconds. Yeah, please do. I'm so intrigued. This is uh, yeah. So it's still got the thing on top, and that's it. That's yeah, amazing. And it's solid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a piece of personal history, right there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, um, and I just about your comic book collection. Did you did you collect a particular? um story or is it kind of like across the board 
Uh, it was, um, I was pretty much very specific to Marvel. Had a few DC comics, but it was, it was Marvel and specifically Wolverine comics. Um, I always loved the character of Wolverine. Um, so yeah, I've got quite a few of those. Um, yeah, yeah. If you were stuck on a desert island, what one film would you take? That's a very tough question. Um, I'm just going to go with the one that pops into my head. And for some reason, it's Born Identity. Um, and I'd probably say it is, I think it was a film that saved the James Bond franchise, first of all. Um, so I think that's why, that's why, yeah, I think that's why it's important. I'm a huge fan of espionage uh, films. I actually applied to be an MI5 when I was 12. <laughs> I sent off a letter. <laughs> um, could have been a different life. Um, but also it's it's got action in it, which and I think the action is incredible. And I think it kind of changed the game for action films. Um, the direction, Paul Greengrass, I believe it was, um, was incredible. The, the use of camera work is, is, is amazing. Um, the music score was phenomenal. Um, and yeah, Matt Damon as Jason Bourne was, was, it was, I just thought it was an incredible film. So it's got action. It's got great story. Um, and whenever I've watched it, and I've watched it many times, I'm never bored by it. You know, as soon as you hear that music, that scene, I'm in. So I think that'll be, we'll see, see if I get bored of it on the island. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing.